Welcome back to Tutorial Graphics and in today's video I've got 5 different illustrator functions that cause confusion within graphic designers. So the first function that often causes confusion in the end user of Adobe Illustrator is the compound path function. Now it's a hugely powerful function and you do need to understand how to use it. Now to demonstrate I have two shapes and the square is in front of the circle. If I go ahead and use a compound path function, the square is going to be cut into the circle itself. Now you might think this is just like the pathfinder function, and in some respects it is. But the difference here is that we just have access to both shapes. Firstly you can press A on your keyboard to access a direct selection tool and then click one of the anchor points. And then press V for the standard selection tool and then you can select the entire square. From here, you can adjust the position and the scale, but also with the direct selection tool, also the live corners are accessible as well. Making adjustments like this with the Pathfinder function is simply not ideal and not doable. However, we can go one step further and we can use the group selection tool. This tool is found under the direct selection tool and it's going to allow me to move around the cutout section with ease, as you can see on the screen right now. So lastly, one awesome aspect of this function that makes it a non-destructive workflow method is that you can release the compound path like so. Something again the Pathfinder won't do. So moving on to the second illustrator function I'm going to explain, we have the align art to pixel grid option. Now I'm going to make sure my measurements are set to pixels simply for demonstrational purposes. Now you can alternate the align to pixel grid function here in Illustrator CC, but in the older versions it can be found in the transform window. At the moment I've got the function switched off, and as I move the square around the artboard, notice how smoothly it moves across the screen. I'm able to position it exactly where I want to. However, if I go ahead and activate it, notice how choppy the movement is now. This is because Illustrator is snapping the shape to the pixel grid of my artboard. There are times where this can be useful, but there are also many times where it's going to hamper your workflow. So like with any tool or any function, it's got a time and a place, and you should know when to be using it or not. Again, here you can see the difference when using the pen tool. If you wanted to freehand draw an illustration, having this function activated would be a very bad idea, as you're not going to have the freedom to move exactly where you want to. So we've arrived at the third function that tends to cause some confusion within designers, and that is the expand function. I've got a circle here with a one point stroke, which of course is editable. The expand function can be found here, and notice there is a greyed out option below known as expand appearance. And we're going to be looking at that very soon, but for now, if I use the expand function, all of my effects, the strokes and the text will be converted to paths and nailed down. This renders the design or the object non-editable. Now this is helpful when you're sending final designs to a client, as no matter how scaled up or down the design is, the visual appearance of the design is going to remain the same. The layers window will show you how the stroke and the fill are now separate vector shapes. But how does this differ from the fourth function, expand appearance? Now going into the object fly down menu, expand appearance is still greyed out. The reason being is that the expand appearance and expand are essentially the same function, but the difference is that if you perform any kind of function or effect in the appearance panel, you would then have to use the expand appearance. But let me show you right now if that does confuse you. I'm just going to apply a simple drop shadow in the appearance panel to demonstrate, nothing too fancy, but you should be aware the appearance panel really does have a lot of options and functions open to you as a graphic designer. So now I've used the appearance panel, you will notice the expand function is now greyed out, but the expand appearance function is now available. This is simply the difference between these two expand functions. Heading back into the layers window, you will see that the stroke and also now the drop shadow have their own objects. So 
So the final illustrator function that I'm going to fully explain is the group selection tool. Now we've already seen one aspect of this tool earlier, where you can use it to move objects within a compound path, also as well as within clipping masks. But what other things can it actually do? Well, I have some circles here, and at the moment, they're all independent and individual. But I can go ahead and make three different groups by selecting each group and pressing Command or Control G. This will leave me with three groups of circles that are unable to be moved or selected individually. But to go one step further, I can put all of these three groups into one larger single group. So now I have three groups of circles inside a larger group. And again, the layers window will show exactly what I'm talking about. So with the group selection tool in use, I can click once to select one object within a group, something the selection tools cannot do. But if I click again, it will select the group that it's inside of, and then a third click will select the larger group. We can also hold down the shift key to select various items within a group or groups, and then go ahead and edit them afterwards. The group selection tool allows you to move, edit, and work on design elements that are locked down inside of groups. If you learned something today, let me know with a comment down in the comment section below. And of course, until next time guys, design your future today. Peace.